Have you ever wanted to start your own gallery? Well, I want to tell you about something I did a few years ago that was really special to me in my practice. So several years ago, I had an idea to start a small nonprofit gallery space to show contemporary photography in my town. Now, the problem is I don't have the means to buy a space and to hire a staff to hang a show and to do all these things. So instead, I found spaces in my downtown area that were vacant. What I did was I worked with our local downtown development and I got a small grant or a small amount of funds to hang shows of contemporary photographers for our local community. Now in my town, there's no way to actually see contemporary photography. We only have maybe one gallery space and that's typically more folk art and traditional things in the area, but you're never gonna see anything from outside of this area in our town. So this is how it works. You find a vacant property with a lot of windows. So I suggest a downtown area or a shopping mall or something like that. You approach the person that owns the building and especially if it's a building that hasn't been used in a long time, that's been sitting vacant for a long time, and you just ask them if you can hang some stuff in the windows. So the space that we used, it was pretty old and the windows were not very stable. So I was hesitant to actually hang photos up in the windows because I was afraid of a myriad of things. Also, I live in the South and so it gets really hot in the summertime and really cold in the wintertime. And so using an adhesive could be really problematic because if it gets really hot, the pictures could fall down. So I really wanted a secure way to hang these pictures on the walls. So what I did was actually built four by eight flats um, for each space that you could see an image all the way around the building. Now we were lucky because this building was a corner lot. So we had space on two streets and at the four way stop. And this allowed for a lot of viewing angles of the work. Um, so once we had the space and we had these flats built, what I would do is I would reach out to friends of mine, to people I've met over the years that are making incredible work, and I would kind of share with them the vision. So with this gallery, I thought it was very important to, so, to show socially mindful work, work that um, is engaging to a broader audience. Um, and the main audience that would consume this work are people that are walking down the street typically to either go to a nonprofit restaurant, a pay what you can restaurant, or possibly an area to help with people that are displaced or unhoused in our community. And so a lot of the people that pass by this space were not your traditional uh, gallery goers. Um, most of the people probably would never step foot in a gallery. And that was important to me because I wanted to give art to um, more people than would ever typically be exposed to it. And so I would find artists that I felt like agreed with that thought process. Artists that were even excited about their work being shared um, with a broad spectrum of people. One thing I learned doing this is that you really need large, large prints for people to be able to see them from the sidewalk through a pane of glass onto another wall. So I tended to print very large, even larger than a lot of these. this work was originally shown. So when it came time to print the work, uh, we would just do poster prints at a local print shop, like the types of prints that people use for advertisements on walls and things like that. So they weren't the highest quality prints in the world. And that's one concession that we had to make because we had a very small budget. And also these prints were gonna be um, in windows. And if you know anything about any sort of printed material, the longer that it's exposed to the sunlight, the more it damages that print over time. So there was no point in using archival quality prints because they would only be damaged by sitting in the sunlight for so long. So we would print all the, the shows out and then one show would typically go up for anywhere from six to eight months at a time. And that seems like a really long time, but because it was a non-traditional space um, and because literally it was only me doing all, all the work, uh, the curating, the hanging, the taking down of the shows, um, we didn't have anybody, any attendance in place. And this is another, you know, it's a kind of a blessing and a curse. We didn't have to budget for that, but also that meant that I could only do this when I had spare time, which is fine. Um, the space that we used, it didn't have electricity, it didn't have air conditioning or heat, 
And so you could really only see the work during the daytime. You can only see it kind of if you were passing by. So I tended to leave it up longer so that everyone in the community would have a chance to spend time with it. We also had a website going where we would kind of explain the body of work. You could see the artist statement and things like that. And the web address is available on the, on the windows of the gallery that you could see that. So if someone wanted to investigate further, they could find out more about that artist and about the work. So this process for me was uh, the beginnings of thinking about how do I make work accessible to people? Um, I come from a blue collar, like working class family. I'm the only person to go to graduate school, only person to graduate from college in my immediate family. And so uh, I feel like it's strange to make work that only a certain demographic of people have access to or that would see. And so this was the first part of the journey of like, how do we make gallery spaces that are very approachable, that are cheap, that are not intimidating and for any person to see. And, you know, I, I'm sure that there's a thousand ways to do this. This is just the way that I did it. And I wanted to make a video about it because I think this is easily duplicatable. You could replicate what I've done in your town for a very small amount of money. Really, honestly, once we built the flats, which you wouldn't have to do that, if you wanted to do a short-term show, you could um, use tape and hang the photos in the windows, or you could use uh, an adhesive um, paper, whatever, you know, whatever you decide would work. Um, other than the lumber cost for the walls, the printing cost was only a couple hundred dollars every few months, every six months possibly. So that's such a small amount of money to utilize a space that is vacant to, to make it look nicer. And this benefits the person that owns the space because now when people walk by it, it's not just vacant and gross looking, that the windows are clean, there's something happening in there, at least there's something for people to look at. And that's a higher likelihood that someone would come and rent that space. And for us, that's what happened. Over the pandemic, uh, I still had shows going and the person that owned that spot ended up selling it to a friend of mine that has a coffee shop. And in that coffee shop, another friend of mine has a bookstore and another friend has a record shop all in this one space. And now it's an amazing, it's one of the best coffee shops in my town. Not that me having a gallery space made that happen, but you know, the benefit of doing something like this is that I can now take that idea and I can move it to another open spot or another open space. I can put those walls up in another spot. Um, and so I think there are ways in which to show, especially photography, because it is, we can duplicate an image so easily. We can print an image so easily. I think it's better to find a spot, find a place and show what you can on your budget rather than keeping it to yourself and waiting for your ship to come in. And especially if you live in a town like mine, where there's not a lot of art for people, there's not a lot of art for the community. And my hope with that space, and I don't know if this ever happened, but my hope is that maybe a young person, a kid, a teenager came along and they saw some work in the space and they thought, I kind of want to try this, or oh, I wonder if I made some pictures and hung them up somewhere, or Maybe they're inspired to make a film or a painting or play some music or whatever. You know, storytelling is very important to me, but there's a lot of other ways to express yourself other than storytelling. Um, so if you have questions about this and how this works, this space was called The Coalescence. And I, like I said, it closed down um, a couple of years ago and I haven't restarted it because there's a lot of other things in life going on. I've got little kids. Um, but I hope that maybe you can try something like this. Maybe you can make a space where you are, even if it's small, maybe go to a local uh, shop of some sort and see if you can hang some of your photos in the window or group together with some of your other friends that are photographers and maybe get together and do a group show somewhere um, that wouldn't traditionally have artwork shown there. There's a lot of options. And if you come up with a good idea, please share it. Comment and let us know um, some things that you've tried or some things that you've done. Because I would love to try different experiments to you know, make, especially photography, more accessible to more people. And it doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to think about it and you know, be smart, come up with a good idea. And you know, I'm not the first person to do something like this. I saw multiple other people doing it. I just 
took it and ran with it in my community. So if you have ideas or if you have things that you're doing, please share them. I would love to hear them. And hopefully this has inspired you to make your own gallery space.